and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Boom, 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 boom. What a lovely day, said Pat to Jess as they drove along the valley on a fine sunny morning. They came into the village and stopped at the post office as they did every day to collect the letters. Good morning, Pat called. Morning, Pat, said Mrs. Goggins. Looks like a busy day for you, lots of letters and parcels. <laughs> well, at least it's a nice day for it. That's odd, said Mrs. Goggins. Most of the post seems to be for Katie and Tom Portage. Ah, but of course it's their birthday. Oh, so it is, said Pat. Won't they be excited when they see all these parcels? They are lucky. I remember when I was their age, waiting for the post. Hey, I'd better be on my way. <laughs> They'll be looking out for me. Well, I'll be off. Goodbye. Boom, 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 boom. Pat was on his way. Before going to the Pottages, he had to call at the village school. Some of the children had arrived early and were playing in the schoolyard. Bill Thompson came running up to take care of the letters till the headmaster came. He always did that because he was the oldest. Oh dear! Right in a puddle. Sarah and Lucy Selby asked Pat if he was good at hopscotch because they'd just had new lines painted in the yard. Well, it's a long time since I played, said Pat, but I'll have a go. Let's see now. He was quite good at it. Whoops! Pat was enjoying the hopscotch so much he almost forgot the time. Hey, I'll have to be going. We can't have the post being late, can we? <laughs> Especially today. Bye-bye, Pat. Goodbye. Katie and Tom saw him coming and ran to meet him. They were so excited they couldn't wait to see what Pat had brought them. They're twins, you see, so it was a double birthday. Pat wished them a happy birthday, then took a letter to their mother.
Tom's present was just what he wanted. But Katie didn't seem very pleased with hers. What's up with Katie? asked Pat. Mm, she's wrong side out today, said Mrs. Pottage. She's lost Sarah Ann. Sarah Ann? Is, is that the little doll she takes to school? She takes it everywhere. She's lost without it. I don't know what we'll do if it doesn't turn up. Oh, it's sure to turn up somewhere. Trouble is, it could be anywhere. We went to see Aunt Alice yesterday and called at lots of places. She could have left it anywhere. Don't worry, I'll look for Sarah Ann, said Pat. I might come across her. I'm good at finding things, you know. <laughs> we'll get her smiling again. You'll see. Cheerio. Come on, Jess. We've work to do. The next stop was the church. The Reverend Timms heard Pat's van coming. There was a card from Cousin Joan on holiday in Mallorca. Pat told him about Katie's lost doll. Oh, she could have lost it in the church, said Reverend Timms. She always brings it. Oh, well, seek and thou shalt find. Let's have a look. Mind your head. Found anything? Called Pat. Oh, yes, a bump on the head. At last, the Reverend Timms did find something, but it wasn't Sarah Ann. It was a lady's glove. It had the letters DT sewn inside. DT, said Pat. Dorothy Thompson, that's whose it is, I'm sure. I'll take it along for her. She will be pleased. Well, I hope Katie's doll turns up somewhere said the Reverend Timms. We'll just keep on looking till it does, said Pat. Thanks for helping. Cheerio! Cheerio! 